Okay, so starting from your today lecture, which is your lecture number nine. Okay, so again, it is a vapor power, gas power cycle. So, can anyone confirm what's P on my screen right now? Yes, sir. Lecture number nine, P on my screen? Yes, sir, gas power cycle. Okay. Okay, so coming towards uh, again uh, the gas power cycle. Previously, we already talked about uh, uh, how to uh, draw the TS and TV diagram for your focus cycle, which is your spark ignition engine, which is in this spark ignition engine. So now, what we have to do is we have to develop some equation uh, in order to analyze your focus cycle and to uh, find out the efficiency and different parameters related to your focus cycle. So you will see how to develop the equations uh, related to uh, the photo cycle. Okay, so starting from the, okay, so again it will be just a quick review for you that in your photo cycle uh, there will be four processes, uh, there will be isotropic compression, constant volume heat rejection, isotropic expansion process, constant volume heat rejection process and this is your DS. Diagram and I hope you can easily draw this diagram without any issue. So, another important point over there is whenever we talk about four stroke cycle or two stroke cycle, there will be some different uh, difference between them. So, in four stroke, one cycle, there will be four stroke and there will be two revolution of your crankshaft. And in two stroke, in one cycle, there will be two stroke and there will be one revolution of your crankshaft. Okay, and I also I had also shared one video link uh, in the channel of Thermodynamics 2 video class. So I hope uh, you already uh, saw that video so that you can easily understand how the compression process, intake process, exhaust process, and extension process take place in your internal combustion engine. So now the two-stroke engine, which are generally less efficient than their four-stroke counterpart, but they are relatively simple and inexpensive and they have high power to weight and power to volume ratio okay so why this is a, a simple one the two stroke engine the two strokes engine are a simple one because in the four stroke engine we already see that uh, when we are talking about the ts diagram for the different strokes there will be valves over there So there will be valves which are intake valve and exhaust valve but here in the two stroke cycle uh, two stroke engine uh, there will be ports okay so and so it's make more simpler uh, to open the ports rather than the valves so that's why it, it will be more simpler and also there will be less strokes so that's why it is uh, less efficient as well okay so now coming towards uh, this is just a uh, overview of it we will talk about this two stroke engine later on as well so the main thing is that you have to know that there will be two revolutions in your four stroke engine and one revolution in your two stroke engine. Okay, so starting from the PV diagram, I will just quickly uh, draw over there so that we can see that what's happen in your Photo cycle and how to build the different equations by using um, these processes. Okay, so we already know that uh, there will be one to two, which is your compression process. That will be isotropic compression. Then there will be two to three, which is your constant volume heat addition process. Then there will be three to four, which is your expansion process, and also to the isotropic expansion. And then 4 to 1, which is your uh, constant volume heat rejection. So Q out, this is Q in. So this is your photo cycle. Okay, so starting uh, in order to start developing the equation, we also have to start from the same procedure which we already see in the right hand system analysis. Uh, so we start from the energy balance equation. So energy balance equation, uh, I think you are familiar with it. That energy in, energy out is equal to change in energy. Okay, so this is the basic equation for uh, where we have to start. Okay, so you just have to say that there will be Q in minus Q out. Then there will be W in 
minus w out. Okay. So now here, previously when we see the Rankine cycle analysis, uh, we noticed that uh, the change in energy, which is uh, in your uh, right hand side, is equal to the enthalpy. But here, what we have to do is we just say that it will be equal to change in internal energy. Okay. So the question is why we do not use enthalpy over there other than we use the internal energy. Okay. So the main thing is that H is equal to U plus EV. Okay, so this is a basic equation for your enthalpy one. So we see that in the Rankine system, uh, when we are talking about Rankine uh, system, there will be a production of steam, and then we also have other section of your power plants. Okay, so that's why in order to generate the steam, we need the internal energy, and in order to flow that steam, we need the work as well. So that's why on for the Rankine system, enthalpy will be more accurate thing in order to represent your change in energy. However, here there will be no flow, so that's why we just represent with the internal energy rather than uh, and because here we are just producing, uh, there will be uh, air and we are just producing expansion and compression processes. So there will be no flow of uh, your uh, air to other parts like there will be a, a compressor or okay, so that's why we just uh, represent with the internal energy okay so now so first thing is that your q in the equation so in q in uh, which is in between your two to three there's a constant volume uh, heat addition process so it's mean that your work terms are automatically zero and your q out is also equal to zero so now it is equal to delta u and delta u is between three to two so u three minus u2. This is your q in equation and also if we uh, notice over there that uh, from your chapter number 4 uh, that change the internal energy is equal to Cv your final point minus initial point temperature. Okay, So this is your relation which comes from your chapter number 4. So you can uh, go to chapter number 4 if you do not know about this relation you can easily find in chapter number 4 and you can revise it. So this is your first equation which is for your QA. So specific uh, heat volume and constant volume you can easily find from thermodynamic table. So this temperature either you can find out and either it will be mentioned in your problem as well. So now coming towards your Q out equation. So Q out is in between 4 to 1. So similar thing U4 minus U1 which is again equal to Cv T4 minus T1. Okay, so this will be a second equation which is your Q out. Okay, so now we already know the efficiency equation. The efficiency is your total network, which is your area under the curve, and also the denominator you have to divide it with the Q in. So similar procedure, we will see that how to develop the so you can just note it down, then I will proceed for that. Okay, so for the efficiency equation, uh, efficiency is equal to W net over Q in. So by just plugging all the value, W net is Q in minus Q out, and uh, you will uh, get W is equal to Q out over uh, efficiency is equal to Q in. Okay, so Q out is known to you, Q in is known to you. So you can just plug in these values, uh, which is your equation one. So Cv uh, T3 minus T2 and Cv and equal minus T1 in the equation of your efficiency and you will get uh, the relation which is 1 minus 
T4 minus T1, T3 minus T2. Okay, so this is the relation uh, for this one. So we will move forward by using this equation. You can say this is your equation number four, four and you can just note it down this equation. Okay, so, so there is a two procedure in your auto cycle analysis. One is when you have to assume uh, that will be a variable specific heat and second procedure is for your constant uh, specific heat value. Okay, so there will be a lot of difference between uh, the procedure which we have talked to in order, in order to analyze uh, both of the cycle by using these two different assumptions. Okay, so first we will talk about the variable. Uh, specific heat so that you can okay so first we will uh, see the constant uh, specific heat so for constant specific heat first you have to notice there will be some equation from your chapter number four which i just uh, write down over there so i will just uh, write down over there so that you can get the understanding of this so first equation is t1 over t2 so this one and two is an isentropic process okay so these equation is only valid for isentropic processes T1 over T2 and V2 over V1 K minus 1. Okay, so this equation comes from your chapter number 4. So if you do not know about this equation, you can go and check chapter number 4 and also you get the derivation uh, uh, of this equation in chapter number 4 as well. Okay, so similar thing, another equation which is T1 over T2 which is equal to V3 over V4 k minus 1 okay so how this equation come from because if you can notice over there v2 is equal to v3 and v1 is equal to v4 okay so if you can just put uh, the value of v2 is equal to v3 and v1 is equal to v4 you can come up with this equation as well and similar thing uh, another asymptotic process which is uh, from 4 to 3 so you can also write t4 over t3 is equal to v3 over v4 k minus 1 okay so these equations are only valid for your constant specific heat assumption okay so either it will be mentioned in your question or problem statement you have to use the assumption of constant specific heat so then you have to find the state properties so for example if your temperature one is given and uh, you have to find the volume at two and or you have to find other uh, parameters so you can use these relation for your constant specific heat and the procedure is totally different so whatever the equation we will develop over there uh, is based on constant specific heat and it is not valid for your uh, variable specific heat okay, so just note it down these relations so then we will move forward Okay, from these equation you can notice that if you can just make it this equation equal to this one because uh, the right hand side of these equation are same because v2 is equal to v3 and v1 is equal to v4. So you can easily say that t1 over t2 is equal to t4 over t3 and uh, now you can just rearrange it so t3 over t2 which is equal to t4 over T1 and if you can subtract minus 1 from both of the side so it will not make uh, any difference in this equation because again it will be same thing so T4 over T1 minus 1 okay so this is the same equation which is uh, both of these are same equation so now if you can notice over there so from this equation
Okay, so you can write it down, then I will move forward. Okay, so if you can write, uh, just solve this equation, which is you can say equation number two. So you will get that T1 over T2 is equal to T4 minus T1 over T3 minus T2. Okay, and this uh, right hand side, you can see over there, which is in your efficiency equation as well. Okay, so you can easily say that your efficiency is equal to 1 minus T1 over T2. So it's mean that your efficiency is equal to one minus okay. So if you can notice from the previous equation which I talked about that these are valid for constant specific heat, and uh, so you can notice that if you put one minus v2 or v1 k minus one, so it will be the same thing because it is equal to d1 or d2. Okay, so now if you can uh, remember that this uh, ratio, which is V2 over V1, uh, which is your compression ratio is equal to V1 over V2. So maximum volume over minimum volume. So by using this relation, you can easily say that this is 1 over R K minus 1. So R is your compression ratio. So this is your efficiency equation for auto cycle. So here, if the compression ratio is mentioned in your question, and K value, which is your K is equal to CP over CV. Okay, so this is the specific heat ratio, and this value you can easily find for air uh, in your thermodynamic table. So you will see what these values are, and by using the uh, these two values, you can easily find the value of K. And this is fixed for air or any working fluid. Okay, and this equation is only valid for your constant specific heat consumption. Okay, and if there will be a variable specific heat, then we will see what is the procedure for it. Okay, so for whenever it was mentioned in your question, there will be a variable specific heat. assumption in order to solve the auto cycle. So the two relations which are valid for your uh, two states which is P2 over P1 so you can say over P2 over P1 is equal to PR2 over PR1. Okay so now here you can easily notice that this is the pressure uh, either to be a state number 2 or either to be on the 1. So what is this PR2 uh, then? Okay so PR2 is basically the relative pressure and uh, this relative pressure uh, is a dimensionless quantity. Okay, so you can uh, notice from uh, the thermodynamic table, and we will see also by using the thermodynamic table how to uh, find out these relative uh, pressures from the thermodynamic table. So this is only used for variable specific heat, and it is only valid for your air. Okay, and then there will be another equation, and these equations you can easily find in chapter number 4 as well. Okay, so you can go and revise chapter number 4, you will find out how these equations come from. Specific volume at 2, specific volume at 1 is equal to relative specific volume at 2 and relative specific volume at 1. Okay, so this is also one equation which is only valid for air and this is also a dimensionless we are the specific volume and uh, a relative specific volume and two and this is also mentioned in your thermodynamic table and you will see how to find these values when we are going to solve the problem which is related to very good specific heat okay so you can just note it down these equations so then we will move forward uh, for the next thing
okay so these are all the equation uh, which is written over there neatly so you can just go through it it was the same equation which i already wrote in the previous slide so you have to go to this slide by yourself okay so it is mentioned over there okay so this is the equation which we already talked about this is valid for you constant specific heat uh, function and if you can notice over there uh, a graph uh, which is your efficiency of photo cycle and this is your compression ratio over there so if you can see that whenever we have to increase the compression ratio your efficiency uh, going to increase however there will be some ranges for example if you can notice over there the range started from 7 until 10 there will be a less increase in your uh, efficiency of photo cycle as comparison to the previous uh, increase in the comp uh, compression ratio so this is because of uh, that we have to use the another term in order to define it which is your auto ignition or engine noise so this is the limit where your uh, efficiency will slightly uh, going towards the increase for example this uh, point number 10 and this is your limit for your engine knocking okay so what is the term engine knocking is so how to define the engine knocking so engine knocking is basically one um, state where uh, there will be a increase in oxidation process and due to this oxidation process in your piston cylinder arrangement there will be a premature ignition okay and when there will be a premature ignition so that was uh, um, that will cause some engine knock okay and due to this knocking your efficiency of your cycle will uh, going towards decrease so that's why what we have to do is we have to either uh, make sure that our compression ratio will be less okay so that will be one procedure in order to avoid the engine knocking and second process is to uh, method is to uh, just add uh, some in anti engine knocking agent in your uh, piston cylinder arrangement so that there will be no knocking process and third method is to increase the octane number of your fuel okay so we will see that whenever we have to use the high octane fuel so there will be uh, your engine become more efficient over there okay so this is basically because there will be less engine knocking for your high octane fuels okay so this is the term of your engine knocking okay so if you can notice over this graph so this is again the relation for your efficiency and your compression ratio and if you can notice that there will be three value of k's over there so these are the cp or cv for three different working fluids so if we can change the working fluid in your motor cycle uh, for example this is your air so this k is equal to 1.4 so it means this is air and this is so you can say that it will be another gas or this is some other gas so by changing the value of k your efficiency also increases so this is also one term so if we can increase the cost and uh, increase the ratio of specific heat so we get the maximum efficiency out of our cycle as well. okay so the rest of these things are similar to the previous one which i already talked about so now coming towards the question so that you can easily understand what's happening over there so example 9-2 so which is from your book so you have to just read this example first and then we will see that how to solve this example okay so if you notice over there an ideal photo cycle has a compression ratio of 8 so it's mean that photo cycle is there and it is working and the ideally then compression ratio 8 is mentioned over there it's mean that your maximum volume or minimum volume ratio is mentioned at the beginning of the compression process air is at 100 kPa and 17 degrees celsius so if you can just correlate it with your ts diagram you can notice that the beginning of compression process start from uh, your t1 and pressure 1 okay so it's mean that your point number 1 properties are given in your question so t1 and p1 is mentioned over there 800 kJ per kg of heat is transferred to air during the constant volume heat addition process so it's mean that your q in is also mentioned in your question as well account into the variation of specific heat of air with temperature okay so here it is mentioned that you have to assume variation of specific heat okay so this is not a constant uh, specific heat problem so the procedure we will see how to uh, solve this uh, problem uh, for by using the assumption variation of specific heat 
determine the maximum temperature and pressure that occur during the cycle. So if you just go to your TS diagram, you will find out your maximum temperature and pressure is at point number 3 on your TS diagram, which is the highest temperature and pressure. So you have to find T3 and T3 in this uh, question. The network output, so you can find the network output, which is Q in minus Q out. The thermal efficiency, uh, you have to find out and the mean effective pressure of the cycle, also you have to find out by using this data. So starting from okay, so this is your PV diagram. So you have to draw it by yourself. You can by PV diagram you can easily notice that V1 is equal to V4, V2 is equal to V3, and this is equal to 1 over 8 into V1, so which is your compression ratio, which is mentioned in your question which is 8. Okay, so from there uh, you can easily find out that V3 is equal to 1 over 8 V1. Okay, so starting from your process number 1, state number 1. So the state 1 property which is your 290, you have to convert all the temperature into Kelvin. Okay, because if you, uh, we will see that uh, in the thermodynamic table, when we uh, go to find out different values, uh, the temperature given in your thermodynamic table is in Kelvin. That's why you have to convert it. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to find the internal energy because we noticed that. Uh, okay, and other main difference between the constant specific heat consumption and variable specific heat consumption is that whenever there will be mentioned that variable specific heat, you always have to look for thermodynamic tables to find out the values of internal energies. And when it is mentioned constant specific heat, then you have to use directly the relation which I already mentioned in your uh, first slide that these uh, three relations are valid for your constant specific heat assumption. And for that, you do not need to go to thermodynamic table. So here it is mentioned that variable specific heat, then we have to look for the values in your thermodynamic table. Okay, so now you just have to open the thermodynamic table and you will see your table number A. 17, which is your ideal gas properties of air. Okay, so you just have to jump to A17 table and you will find out some properties. Okay, so here is table A17. So if you can notice over there, temperature is given. So this is your temperature line, enthalpy is given over there. So this is your relative pressure, which is the dimensionless quantity. This is the internal energy. So you have to note down these values from here. You can easily find your relative specific volume over there. And then this we will talk about uh, in the later section that what these are when we are going to solve the problem related to this. Okay, so now we just look for the temperature which is 290. So here it is 290, which is a state number one. So what you have to do is you have to just note down the value of U. 206.91 internal energy at one and also I already told you that the relation which is valid for your uh, variation in specific heat uh, you have to note down the value of uh, relative specific volume at one as well so we will see how to use this value later on but first you have to note down these two values so from thermodynamic table you get the u1 value which is your 206.91 91 kilojoule per kg and your relative specific volume is equal to 676.1 from your thermodynamic table. So this is the state 1 properties. So now uh, we have to find the so we have to find the temperature and pressure in all the states either to be 1, 2, 3 and 4 so that we can uh, get the understanding about uh, what are the temperature and pressure ranges and then we will easily find the internal energy at all the states. So you can say that relative specific volume at 2, relative specific volume R at 1 is equal to V2 over V1. So which we already talked about, this equation is valid for your uh, variable specific heat. And if you can say that this is also equal to 1 over R, okay, because this is your relation, uh, which is your uh, V2 over V1 
which you can easily say that R is equal to your maximum body mode minimum body mode. Okay, so from this equation, you have to find relative specific volume at two as well. Okay, and we use this relative specific volume at two uh, value in order to find the internal energy at point number two because we have to find the internal energy. Uh, at all the points, so that we get the values of Q in and Q out, and from that Q in and Q out, we find the thermal efficiency uh, value as well. So, relative specific volume at two becomes 676.1 Br1 over compression ratio, which is given in your question, R, and that will be 84.51. So, this is your value for relative specific volume at two. So now again you have to go to thermodynamic table and now you have to look for the value which is your relative specific volume at 2, 84.51 and again uh, against this value 84.51 you have to note down the value of your internal energy and temperature. Okay, So then you will find the value of uh, D2 and U2 over uh, point number 2. So now again we will jump to your thermodynamic table A17. Okay, so now you just have to look for the relative specific volume line. So this is over there, and you have to find the value 84.51, and you just have to look these values. And once you find the value which is closer to 84.51, okay, so you can find out that 84.51 is in between 81.89 and 85.34, and it is in between temperature 650 and 660. So now you have to apply the interpolation, linear interpolation. You already know that if uh, two variables, three, there will be three variables, and two variables are known to us, and one variable is in between, you can easily find the third variable by using the linear interpolation. And by using the linear interpolation, you have to find that uh, temperature as well, and also you have to find linear uh, by applying the second interpolation for your internal energy as well. So from here you will get easily the value of u and value of t which is your t2 and u2. Okay, so I am not going to apply the linear interpolation, I will just write down the values. So you have to do the linear interpolation by yourself. So t2 by using this vr2 value will be 652.4 Kelvin and your u2 is equal to 475.11 kilojoule per kg. Okay, so now the state number two properties are known to us. Okay, so now another equation which is valid for your guesses is that whenever there will be so P V P1 V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. So it it can be valid for all the states. Okay, so either it will be isentropic process, either it will be a constant volume process. So you can apply uh, this uh, this equation for two different state points, and you can easily find the pressure or temperature. For if uh, the state one properties are known to you, you can easily find the second state property by using this equation. Similarly, we have to apply this equation for your point number one and two. Okay, so you can just write down P2 okay, and from there if you can just rearrange the equation P2 is equal to P1 T2 over T1 okay, and now uh, P1 is given in your question T2 you already find from here P1 is also mentioned in your problem statement and this V1 or V2 is the ratio and which is equal to the compression ratio. So from there you can just plug in all the values and you will find out that P2 is equal to 1799.7 kilopascal. Okay, so this is your ratio at point number 2. So you can just note it down then you will move towards the state uh, process 2 to 3.
okay so 2 to 3 is your constant volume uh, heat addition process so we already know that the equation which is your qn is equal to u3 minus u2 okay and qn is given in your question so you can just put the value of 800 u3 you have to find and u2 you already find from the previous step so u3 minus and this value you already find from using the linear interpolation from your thermodynamic table so from there you will get the value of u3 which is equal to 1 to 5.11 kilojoule per kg okay so our main target is to find the value of maximum temperature and pressure okay so we will follow this u3 value which is 1 to 7.511 and again we have to go to thermodynamic table and now we have to look for the internal energy value and find out the temperature uh, and uh, relative specific volume against this u3 value okay so if you can just go to your thermodynamic table you will find out that uh, your u value for this uh, line you have to look for it and you have to just say that 1 to 7 5 we are going to sum 5 to the y. so 1 to 7 5 point double 1 is in between 1 to 6 0 point double 9 and 1 to 7 9 point 6 5 so by using the linear interpolation between the for the temperature and then you also have to apply the linear interpolation for your relative specific volume as well because from this we have to find out the uh, for other shape properties as well so you, by just applying the linear interpolation, I'm just going to write out the value. So you have to solve the linear interpolation by yourself. So your T3 value is equal to 1575.1 Kelvin and relative specific volume at 3 is equal to 6.108. Okay, so these both come from your interpolation. Okay, so now we already have the value of uh, T3, okay, so T3 is known to us, so again we can just apply uh, the equation which is P3, V3, T3 is equal to T2 for your point number 2 to 3 and by just rearranging it and you already know that V3 is equal to V2. Okay, so it's mean that these volumes are already cancelled over there and then you can just T3 is equal to T2, T3 over T2 and T2 is known to you because we already find in the previous state which is 1.711 mega Pascal and then you can just uh, say that your temperature at point number 3, 1575.1 uh, you have to find from thermodynamic table by using the linear interpolation which is found here and T2 value is known to you from your process 2 when we find the value in the previous step so which is 652.4 cap and by just solving it you can easily find the value which is 4.345 mega Pascal which is your P3 ok so now the first part is done which is uh, and the main thing is to find your V3 maximum pressure and maximum temperature at the um, so this is your point number 3 ok so now coming towards the part B so part B is to find the W net so you can note it down then I will move forward So part number B is to find W net. You know. Okay, so Q in minus Q out. So Q in is known to us from your problem statement. Q out we have to find out. So Q out is equal to U4 minus U1 
Okay, so u1 already known to us uh, from part number a. So u4 we have to find. Okay, so in order to find the u4, we need the state variable for any other state variable, either it will be a directly specific volume or another property, so that we can look for the value of internal energy at point number four against that variable. So we have to just write down an equation which is relative specific volume at four, relative specific volume at three. But this equation is better for isotropic process, so we can easily apply between these two points. And this equation, which is uh, V4 or V3, is equal to R, and you can say that your VR4 is equal to R relative specific volume at 3. And relative specific volume at 3, we already find in part number A when we are doing the linear interpolation for your temperature 3. Okay, so from there uh, you have to get the value of your VR3. So A into 6.108. So from there we get the value of VR4 as 48.864. So now VR4 is given to us. So now you can just go to thermodynamic table and again you have to look for the value 48.864 and you will find by using the linear interpolation your temperature at 4 is equal to 795.6 Kelvin and also you can find your U4 is equal to 588.74 kJ per kg by using the linear interpolation. Okay. So now U4 is known to us. Okay, So you can easily put the U4 value in this equation and you can find out the Q out value. Okay, So I will just write down over there 588.74 which is this value u4 and u1 value is 206.91 and q out will be 381.83 kJ per kg. Okay, so now q out is known to us. So now we can easily find the w net from this equation. W net is equal to Q in minus 381.83 and that turns out to be 418.17 kJ per kg of W net. Okay, so this is your solution for part number B. So now coming to our part number C. So for part number C, you have to find the efficiency and for efficiency, you already know your W net over Q in. So W net is known to you, Q in is also known to you. And you can just plug in the value and you will get uh, the value for your thermal efficiency. And one thing you always remember that we already find out one relation which is 1 minus 1 over R K minus 1. So this relation is not applicable for your variable specific heat. Okay, So this relation is not valid for variable specific heat. So if it is mentioned uh, variable specific heat, you have to use this relation which uh, we have to put the W net value which we already calculated from the internal energies. Okay, so keep it remember, so do not confuse over there uh, that if it is mentioned very specific and you can just put direct value of R and you can easily find the efficiency over there. Okay, so now coming towards your uh, efficiency, so you can just put the value which is 418.17 and 800 which is mentioned in your question. So you can get your efficiency 52.3%. And also you have to note down one important point that whenever you have to calculate the efficiency from uh, variable specific heat, it will be more accurate. Okay, And it will be more closer towards your efficiency of your actual cycle. Rather than if you assume that it will be a constant specific heat, you will get the efficiency value which is far more uh, greater or far more lower than your actual um, efficiency. So these are the two differences between uh, the, these two uh, assumptions, variable specific and constant specific heat. Okay, so now coming towards your part number D. So for part number D, we have to find mean effective pressure. So for mean effective pressure, we already know your W net over maximum volume minus minimum volume or you can also write down your W net is equal to ok 
okay so this you can also write over there if uh, your v2 is equal to v1 over r from your compression ratio or you can also say that w net is equal to uh, w net over this is your specific volume 1 minus 1 over r okay so this is also one equation which is your for mean effective pressure so here w net is known to you r is mentioned in your question so this specific volume at one you have to find out because it is not equal to your relative specific volume so you have to calculate it by using uh, the relation which we talk about Okay, so you already know that relation which is PV is equal to RT. Okay, so this is valid for all the gases, uh, and then it will be you can say specific volume RT1 over P1. So R is your constant which is uh, mentioned in your table A2. Okay, or you also have to remember it if you don't know it. Uh, the value of 0 0.287 for air. Temperature one is mentioned in your question. Problem statement B1 is also mentioned in your question. Okay, and by just plugging all the value, you will get the value of your relative uh, aspect of volume at 1. 0 0.287, which is your value of R. P1 is mentioned in your question, which is 290 Kelvin. Pressure 1 is also mentioned in your question, 100 kilopascal, and you can just solve it, you will get the value 0 0.832 meter cube per kg. Okay, so this is the value for your specific volume at 1. Okay, now this value is known to you, you can easily find the mean effective pressure from this relation. Okay, you just need to plug these value and you will get the mean effective pressure as the so mean effective pressure by just solving it, you will get 574 kilopascal. Okay, so this is your solution for part number D as well. Okay, so this is the procedure which we have to adopt for variable specific heat. So if you have any question, you can also ask me. If there will be no question, then we will take five minutes of break and then we will uh, look for another question.
starting from another uh, problem uh, again it is an ideal rotor cycle so it is mentioned over there an ideal rotor cycle has a compression ratio of 8 at the beginning of the compression process air is at 95 kilo pascal and 27 degrees this means your temperature at 1 and pressure at 1 is given 750 kilo joule of heat is added in your uh, during the constant volume heat addition process so it means q in is given over there so now the assumption is taking account into constant specific heat at room temperature because it is different from the previous one where we have to use the variable specific heat addition so what it say that to determine the pressure and temperature at the end of heat addition process so again we have to find your maximum temperature and pressure because at the end of heat addition process your temperature and pressure both become maximum and the net load output thermal efficiency of the cycle the mean effective pressure for the cycle so these uh, things we have to find out for using the constant specific heat assumption. So now we will see how to solve it. Okay, so again you have to just correlate with the PV diagram. Okay, so for process one to two, which we already talked about, that whenever there will be isentropic process, the relation that is valid is T2 over T1. So T2 is your final point, T1 is your initial point, is equal to V1 over V2, K minus 1. Okay, so this relation is valid for your isentropic process. And there will be two isentropic processes, one is here and one is here. Okay, so now here, uh, this V1 over V2 is equal to R, so you can easily say that T2 is equal to 300 Kelvin, which is 300. Uh, which is your temperature 1 and your compression ratio which is 8 and this k value is 1.4 minus 1 okay you can just solve it you will get the value of t2 because we have to find all the temperatures and pressure value for all the variable uh, all the states so that we can find the thermal efficiency okay, so this is 789 okay so now coming towards your uh, pressure too. So for pressure, the patient data is valid. Either it will be a constant specific heat, either it will be a uh, variable specific heat, which is T2 equal to T1, V1 over T1. Okay, so this equation is valid for your process 1 to 2. So from here, you can easily find your pressure at number 2. So T2 is equal to T2 over T1 and T1. Okay, so this is your compression ratio. This T2 is known to you from here. This T1 is mentioned in your question. This T1 is also mentioned in your question. Okay, so from there, you can just plug the value 8, 689 Kelvin. This is 300 Kelvin and this is 95 kilopascal and this turns out to be 1745 kilo pascal okay so which is your pressure point number two okay so you have to note it down then i will move to the next step and you have noticed that when we have to uh, do the assumption of constant specific heat so we directly find the value from this relation. We do not go to thermodynamic table to find the values of different properties uh, over there. Okay, so this is the main difference between these uh, two assumptions. So our main target is to find D3. Okay, so in order to find D3, you already know that uh, for your constant volume heat addition process, in your first slide we discussed that you can say 1, 2, 2, 3 is equal to Cv T3 minus T2. Okay, so this is valid for your T2 point. So from here you can easily find your temperature at 3. Because this Q23 is known to you from question, this value 
okay so these value you can easily find cv value and cp value in your table a2 as well okay, so if you can just notice over there a2 table hidden gas specific key at various common uh, or various common gases so you can just find out this a2 table and you will notice that all the properties of your air whether it will be r gas constant cp cv or value of k which is 1.4 which is equal to cp over cv Okay, so these are mentioned over there. So in any other gas also, you can easily find the values of these you know, properties. Okay, so now this is mentioned in your question. This Q in is equal to 750. CV value you can easily find from table A2, 718. So T3 you have to find out and T2 you already find in the previous state. So from here you can easily find T3 which is your maximum temperature and which is at the end of your heat addition process which is the required thing for your part number A and also we have to find the P3. So for P3 you can easily find P3 V3 over T3 which is equal to P2 V2 over T2. Okay, And from there you can say that V3 is equal to but this is equal V2 is equal to V3. So T3 over T2 into P2. So by just plugging all the value, you will get 1734 over there, 689 is your temperature at 2, and P2 is 1745 kilopascal. And you can just find out the value of your P3 as 4392 kilopascal. Okay, so this is your value for your. P3. Okay, so our part number A is finished. So now we will see that how to solve the part number B, which is to find the, the uh, total work. So you have to note on that I will move forward. So coming towards your part number B, which is to find the W net. So for the W net, you have to find your Q in minus Q out. So Q in is given in your question and Q out is equal to, which we already talked about in first slide, CB and final uh, your temperature T4 and T1. Okay, so now here, if you can just notice that CB, you can easily find from your thermodynamic table. And you have to find the T4 because T4 is uh, not known to us, and T1 is also given in your question. Okay, so how to find T4? So again, it is an isentropic process from T to 4, and the relation which is applicable for your isentropic process is T4 over T3. Okay, so this relation is valid. And from there, you can notice that this V3 over V4 is equal to 1 over R, which is your compression ratio. And you can say that T4 is equal to T3, 1 over R, K minus 1. And T3 is known to you from the previous step. So T3 value is 1734 Kelvin. Compression ratio R is given to you in the question. And K minus 1 is equal to 0.4. So if you can just solve it, you will get 755 Kelvin, which is your temperature at 4. Again, by just putting this temperature at 4 over there, so you can find Q out easy. So Q out is equal to 0 0.718, which is the value of CV, 755, which is the value of T4, and T1 value is 300 Kelvin, which is from your problem statement. And now you just have to solve it and you will get the value 327 kilojoules per kg. Okay, so this is your Q 
out value okay and from there you can easily find your w net as well okay so so from there you can just subtract the value which is 750 which is mentioned in your question minus 327 your q out value and you will get the w net as 423 kilojoule per kg of your w net okay so this is the solution of your part number b you can note it down then i will move towards the next part which is part number c to find the thermal efficiency So come, come towards point number C, which is your thermal efficiency. So you can just apply the relation with W net over Q n. Okay, so you can get the value, or also you can apply the relation which is we already talked about, which is one minus one over R K minus one. Okay, so you also have to find the efficiency from this relation, or either you can apply the relation which is W net over Q n. Okay, because these two relations are valid for your constant specific heat terms. And by just putting the value, you will find out the efficiency is equal to 56.4 percent. Or you also have to confirm it that either it will be right or wrong. Okay, so you just have to put the values, and you will easily find the efficiency. Okay, so now coming towards your part number D. So part number D is to find your mean effective pressure. So as we already seen the previous question, your your mean effective pressure will be W net over Specific volume at one, one minus one over R. So this is your relation. So similar procedure, you have to just calculate specific volume at one from R T one over T one. So this R value is known to you. Either you can find from thermodynamic table, which is A two, or either you can remember it. So temperature one is three hundred Kelvin, and pressure one is also given in your problem statement ninety five kilo Pascal. So by just solving it, you will get zero point nine zero. Six meter cube per kg, and by just plugging all the value, W net is known to you. This is known to you from air, and this is from your question and in your problem statement compression ratio. So by just plugging all the value, you will get the value of your mean effective pressure as 534 kilo pascal. So this is your part number D. Okay, so this is the procedure which we adopt for the constant volume, um, constant specific. Heat uh, assumption. Okay, so and you already noticed that we do not use the in this process uh, thermodynamics table. So we only use different relations which are valid for your isentropic processes and different processes uh, which is related to your gases. Okay, so if you have any question, you can ask me. And I will also suggest you have to just go through your chapter number four. Uh, after this lecture or maybe whenever you are free so that uh, you can get understanding about different equations because we have to use these all equations frequently in all the analysis uh, throughout this uh, chapter as well. Okay, so I hope there will be no question. Okay, so now coming towards the question which you have to solve it. So this is the similar question which I already solved in the first uh, problem. Okay, so which is the first problem which we solved in this lecture. Okay, so here again the pressure temperature at state one is given. So these values are given which is QN. So now you have to apply the assumption which is variation of specific heat. So you have to use the thermodynamic table and you have to find the pressure temperature at the end of heat radiation process. 
network output and thermal efficiency and mean factor pressure. And also remember that uh, you do not find this uh, problem at your end of your book because I have changed the values so that you have to solve it by yourself. And another important thing is that uh, I have noticed that many of the students have put a lot of effort in order to solve the question and they solve it very neatly and send it to me in a very proper way. So all the students who send it to me in a neat way and um, send me in a clear uh, snapshot of their work, so they will get from today all the assignment I will give 0.2 absolute mark to each of the student who sent to me in a neat manner. But it will not give any uh, value to the student who do not send it to me, but it will be a edge for the student who do, uh, who do their work neatly. Okay, so this is the thing and now you have to proceed. If you have any question, you can ask me and also there will be no time limit for this question, so you can send it to me by night as well. So there will be no issue, I will mark the present. सर रिकॉर्डिंग पास करते हैं। अच्छा।